three and a half away from nine. Kiwis have a laissez-faire attitude when it comes to sickness or injury. In fact, 95% of us would rather insure our homes and cars than our income and our health. So what can you do to help yourself in the event of a worst-case scenario? Can you get cover for a drug, for instance, like pembrolizumab, since the government refuses to fund it? AMP Advice and Sales Director Blair Vernon joins me now. Blair, good morning to you. Morning, Paul. Now, you would know, as everyone would, that I've been cranking on about pembrolizumab. It's appalling that it isn't funded. Is there an insurance that people could get that if they require that drug... Um, or at least have have severe melanoma that that would cover that. There's an insurance for the condition, not the drug. Right, so, right. so typically that's trauma insurance that you would expect to respond to that. So trauma insurance responds to severe cases of trauma, so cancers, heart attacks, strokes, those kinds of things. And the, many thing other is, the thing is with trauma insurance, it pays out a lump sum when you are suffering that. So you yeah. have then the discretion of spending it on any kind of treatment you want. Yeah, I think that's a key thing. Uh, I know you've been pretty hot on the idea of government funding this stuff. There'll always be one of those drugs that's... Not Always. funded. Yeah. And I think the issue is, all very well, even if you got the funding for the drug, if you're so sick you can't work and you get tipped out of your house because you can't pay your rent or your mortgage, um, it's not much help either. So you need money to fund not only your health care, either if it's not fully funded or not funded at all, but also actually to run the rest of your life because people forget that actually the bills keep, life keep coming goes on. It yeah, does. Which is the aim of the whole thing, of course, that life should go on. Correct. Do you have any idea the proportion of people that, that have taken that responsibility that do have have trauma stroke health insurance and income protection insurance? Uh, we do, and sadly it's far too few. So uh, the data says about 30% of New Zealanders have health insurance, mm-hmm. um, but only about 15 to 20% have trauma cover uh, of varying forms. Um, frequently, um, the issue you find when you go to, you know, you see the news articles about a give a little campaign, that's typically looking to replace what would have been a trauma policy. Yeah, and yeah. I would suggest it um, be far better to have a trauma policy oh, than and, hope. And you hear people that are going through tragic personal Personal situations saying the thing that makes it worse is having to fundraise. I actually have to try and fundraise to get out of this. So what sort of, I mean, ballpark, and it's different yeah. depending on what your age yeah. is and that, but what sort of cost, what are you looking at for trauma well, insurance? I mean, if you're a 25-year-old male or female and you want a quarter of a million dollars of trauma insurance, it's broadly about a dollar a month or a yeah. little bit more. So, uh, sorry, a dollar a, dollar a, a day. Dollar a so day. about so 30 about bucks 20, a month. Yep. It, now, if you're 35, it goes up. So it's about 40 or $50 a month. Um, and it keeps going up because, of course, older people get sick. Sure, and but you're looking at then a payout if, if, if heaven forbid, you should get something which which requires significant treatment of maybe a quarter of a million dollars. Yeah, I mean, I liken it to $30 a month if you're a 25-year-old is about one brunch on the weekend yeah. or it's much less than a pay television subscription. So these are just trade-offs okay. you've got to make about what you want to purchase. Blair, thank you very much again for your sensible advice. Blair Vernon, AMP Advice and Sales Director, and that's it for today. Many thanks to our partner AMP, Hilary Jim. Thank you. Thank you.